Hello, Dumelang, and welcome to another video. I'm about to Mama Hao Dipela, and this is Mama Hao Unchained. If you have been here on our channel for a little bit, you may be aware that my mom is renovating her kitchen and I'm helping her with that. So for today's video, I wanted to talk about um, renovating a kitchen on a budget. Where can you spend your money best and where can you save money? And um, before we get into that, I would first like to acknowledge and thank each and every one of you who have given super chats to me in the previous videos. I sometimes forget to uh, thank you in the videos, but I do always say thank you in the messages. But uh, for all of you who have given super chats to the channel, I truly appreciate each and every single one of you. And um, yeah, it, it really, truly does help in growing this channel. And um it really means a lot to me so uh first things first um i am going to be talking about doing a kitchen on a budget and at the end of the video i will share with you how much the code we got for my mom's kitchen is but um before we even get started i would love to say kitchens are one of the most expensive spaces in your houses that uh, you can uh, renovate and when you start to renovate a kitchen you must be willing to spend money uh, in as much as we can say kitchen on a budget, kitchens are not cheap. So given uh, what I've just said, I'm going to share with you tips on how you can uh, save a little bit of money here and there when you're renovating a kitchen. The first thing that we are going to talk about is uh, the layout of your kitchen. When it comes to uh, renovating a kitchen, a lot of people think about um, the pretty stuff, about how it's going to look and, you know, the kind of materials that you want in your kitchen. Um, but most of us neglect to think about uh, the layout, which is something that helps when you have designers and interior decorators because they help uh, to channel all your thoughts and ideas and um, actually help you with the planning of the kitchen so that uh, you do not forget about such things as um, layout and how your uh, kitchen functions. In as much as you want a beautiful looking kitchen, it has to function just as well. And when it comes to layout, how can you save money on your layout? The kitchen triangle focuses on the placement of your stove, sink and fridge so that it better functions for your kitchen and also for you to be able to move around the space without them being too far apart from each other. When you don't have to move um, your sink, your fridge and your stove, it saves you a little bit of money because when you start to fiddle with those three things, it means that is it could affect your plumbing. It could affect electrical and it could sometimes even affect structural work. So um, when you can uh, get away with doing a renovation without disturbing these three things, already you are going to save yourself a lot on the budget. If it's not necessary for you to move um, your sink, please don't move. So because when you start doing that, then you can open a can of worms where now you start to play around with the plumbing and then one thing can lead to another and you, it will definitely start driving your costs up. So when it comes to my mother's kitchen, we did, we are putting in a gas stove. She was previously using an electric stove. So now we need to put in a gas stove and where the stove is placed right now for us to be able to put the gas on that side. It means that we have to dig underground on the tile in order to have the gas line uh, put in there. Or another option would be to get it through the ceiling, which and again, it's still another uh, expensive cost. So the stove will move to a different location where we will be closer to the gas line and we do not have to drill holes on the ground. But the oven will remain in the same spot as we have uh, electrical supply there for the oven. Another area where you can save money is with your choice of cabinets when it comes to cabinet materials mainly in south africa a lot of us don't do um, solid wood kitchens because they are expensive in my mom's kitchen when they first bought the house back in 1989 they had solid wood cabinets when we did the reno when she did the renovations uh, many years ago she put in a chipboard cabinet which lasted quite a, a long time to be honest right now when we are doing the renovation we are putting in a super wood cupboards super wood is very strong it is 
long lasting for me i prefer that over a chipboard because chipboard the minute it starts to uh, get into contact with water if it's not sealed properly you start having um, quite a bit of damage because um, there is space within the board for the water to move uh, quite quickly and with super wood i love it because uh, you can actually repaint it much better than you can with a chipboard for some people yes they can repaint um, you, they can paint a uh, chipboard but i love super wood because um it's actually easier to paint if you ever decide to change the color mm. yeah so when it comes to that we chose to do a super wood and we did not do a painted ca a cupboard a painted cupboard would definitely be uh, an extra cost so instead of doing that because it's expensive we went with super wood which is not the cheapest of um materials but um when you are doing a kitchen you need to decide on areas where you can uh, spend more money or areas where you can save uh, a bit of money and uh, it will depend on your taste as well and also on your budget so um choosing the right type of cabinets and cabinet material can actually help you to save money you just need to weigh out the cost between all the materials and also depending on the size of your kitchen you can also do a mix of materials so in her kitchen we are going to do uh, two different types of material one but both of them are in a super wood but um, one is a wood finish and then the other one is a colored uh, board finish so when it comes to countertops, there are different uh, surfaces that you can use on your kitchen counters. You can do um, Formica top, which is a wooden board that you can put on your counters. Now they make very nice ones that actually look like marble or uh, stone finishes. And you can either do a butcher block, which is a solid wood uh, material that you can put on your countertop. You can do a quartz or even a marble uh, stone. So for my mom's kitchen, we are going with uh, a quartz uh, material, which is a man-made material. And um, when it comes to quartz as well, there are different uh, price levels when it comes to that. And um, if you want to save money on a quartz, you can always go with a plain color. Your plain white and plain grays will always uh, run a little bit cheaper compared to your calcutters and all those um kind of materials that have uh, sort of like a veining to them so if you still want a solid stone countertop then you can go with a plain color or a plain white a plain gray those kind of things for those who love granite you can also do granite granite is also a little bit cheaper compared to a quartz countertop but uh, we wanted something a little bit light and not too much movement so we went with a calcutta look uh, type of slab backsplash now let's talk tiles for your backsplash. If you want to save money on your backsplash, you can always do uh, big format tiles on your wall. If you're going to do a big format tile on the back of the wall, don't go for a busy material or something that looks like it can be used in a bathroom. They make very plain white um, large format tiles. When it comes to my mother's kitchen, we have not yet decided on the backsplash because uh, sometimes it's better to wait for different stages of the process to go through so that you can make a decision that you are confident with. When it comes to backsplash, um, it, it's better to wait. Uh, don't rush it. Sometimes when you have an idea in your head about uh, how things are going to translate in a space, it doesn't always work out. Uh, the way that you work uh, th that you think it's going to and sometimes i prefer to wait for other things to be finished before i can decide on um the next phase but if you want to save money on uh, a backsplash it's always cheaper to go with a bigger size uh, format tile than uh, to do a small size format tile if you can find a subway tile that is on the cheaper side then um, you are able to save a little bit of money there. but on average uh, subway tiles run anywhere from uh, 350 to as high as uh, you can think when it comes to price and when it comes to big format tiles you can even get uh, bigger size format tiles in the 150 to you know 200 range per square meter and you don't really need that much uh, material for the backsplash but um, I always prefer to put in subway tiles on uh, the backsplash. If you can afford to do um, a slab on the wall, then by all means go ahead and put in a slab stone on your backsplash. 
that will give you sort of like a uniform look and when it comes to cleaning it is always amazing it's a breeze to clean a slab than it is to clean uh grout lines on your tongue uh, as soon as they are done with the kitchen and the countertops are installed then uh, we can go ahead and decide on the backsplash that we are going to install but uh, there's always ways to go around saving money so the bigger you go with the tile the more money you are going to save unlike if you're going to do mosaic sheets. mosaics are nice but they can be busy looking sometimes and for us um in south africa sometimes i watch uh hgtv and i look at them saying uh that mosaic is cheap and all of that but for us in south africa mosaic is just expensive if you are looking at a very cheap mosaic you're probably looking at somewhere in the 90 rand per sheet uh price and if you're going to do like two three square meters or even up to 10 square meters depending on how big your kitchen is it really does become expensive that is why even when i renovate my showers and bathrooms and uh, do the flooring in the bathrooms i never even consider putting in a mosaic because mosaic is quite expensive unless you're going to put it in a small shower then you can do that but for me i hardly ever think or consider putting in mosaic because they really do become expensive especially if you want a nice looking mosaic one that is marble one that is a natural stone then you are definitely looking in the 400 rand per sheet range and that's not per square meter just per sheet one sheet of mosaic can run you up to that much so i would not never recommend putting in a mosaic tile on the kitchen if you've got a big kitchen and also if you don't want a busy looking kitchen now let's talk about the price for my mom's kitchen how much were we quoted for the kitchen so before i tell you how much i will tell you what is included in the in the quotation so in the quotation it includes materials which is all your boards all the handles and um hardware for the cupboards so all your hinges all your runners all of that are included in the materials and also remember we are changing the ceiling so all the ceiling uh, boards and um, the pvc and the cornice that is going to be installed is also included in there and also in the price is uh, the quotation for electrical we are putting in um a couple of plugs because of moving the stove you have to put in plugs for the extractor and we also need to put in another plug for the microwave we are also doing a little bit of plumbing change because we are moving the sink like uh, a few centimeters or less than a meter away from where it is right now so that is also included in there so materials and labor for plumbing materials and labor for uh, electrical and materials and labor for the ceiling is included in there and uh finally what is also included in there is for the countertops and also for the labor of the kitchen installation so how much was the total quotation that we got for all of oh and also the guest line is also included in there 118 and 118 uh, kilogram cylinder of gas included in there so for the total of everything is Ninety-one thousand for a kitchen that is about two point five meters uh, by two point eight. So basically, two point five by three meter kitchen is going to cost us about ninety-one thousand to get it finished. It is a lot, but it is not a lot considering uh, the amount of work that is going to be done in the kitchen and also the material selection. So. Um, if you are considering doing a kitchen it can be done for less if you're not doing uh, any changes to your plumbing and electrical and it also can be done less if you're not doing your ceiling like we are doing that and also um if you go for a cheap board uh, if you go for a cheap board versus super wood then you can also do it cheaper and also with uh, your countertop if you go for a plain color countertop you can always do the kitchen cheaper so already i've mentioned a lot of areas where you can cut off a little bit of money off of the ninety one thousand that we will be paying for the kitchen so yeah don't be afraid to get a quotation always um weigh out your options and compare quotes um if you can also negotiate for uh, a little bit of a discount it always helps 
a lot of us are scared to ask for a discount you get a quote and then you start running instead of having the conversation with uh, the contractors and you know try and get them to meet you halfway but don't always lowball them they always have to make a little bit of a living from the work that they do and um yeah if you can come to some sort of agreement then you can always get a discount here and there so I hope you guys have enjoyed the video i definitely have enjoyed doing this it was difficult for me to sit down i'm struggling with my eyes i don't know if you can see my eyes are red i can't seem to focus in one space for a long time but i definitely managed to sit down and get this video done and uh, thank you to all of you for watching the video and making it to this part and see you next time on another video bye